Hello everybody, this is uh, Carl from S1 Studios. I'm just basically doing a quick tutorial on string runs. Now string runs themselves are something that's bothered me for uh, quite some time, um, before I actually learned how to do them anyway. And I thought that uh, one thing that's missing from the community is, uh, well not missing but there's not many people that um, that do this, is to show people that don't know how to do certain things when writing orchestral music. Um, a couple of good examples of people that do this uh, is somebody like Daniel James who does reviews and various other things so he's, he's a good one to look up as well. Um, that's a shameless plug for him I suppose. Anyway, so well why do string runs? Well string runs really are they they help to bring a orchestral piece together um, and it also adds quite a nice articulation to an orchestral piece that can mean the difference between a very flat piece of music and one that kind of flows, if you see what I mean. Now, for this I'm using Cubase 8, which is the new version of Cubase. Um, I'm also using cinematic strings, and I'm using cinematic strings because they have a lovely run mode on them. Now, you don't have to use cinematic strings, you can use any string library. They don't have to have a run mode on them. You can do this with short samples, with a few tricks as well. But I'm using these because these are the ones that I normally use. Uh, not for you to buy them, to rush out and buy them, but um, for you to just get an example. Now, as I was saying before, this is pitched more at people who've just started, that just begin to write MIDI music, and they don't have a lot of samples to play with so this is more about how to how to write them in MIDI so I'm not going to use all the musical terms in this it's literally going to be just MIDI and how to do this in MIDI okay so first of all um, let's let's have a look at what we've got here so I'll just remove that so this is Cubase 8 um, don't worry about the layout the layout is just one I've set up Okay, so there might be hundreds of channels and various other things. That's not important in what we're doing here. So what I've done, I've separated out to first violin, second violin, basses, cello, violas, and various other things uh, dotted throughout this project. But what we're going to concentrate on is really the first violins. So let's just double click on this. Ooh, that's massive. Let's bring that down a little bit. And so what we're trying to do here is do something which I would call a cascading run. Now a cascading run is something where you start off with a note and, well I'll tell you what, I'll show you what I mean. So we'll just solo this and this is the type of run that I'm going to demonstrate today. Okay, it's not a fantastic one, but this again, this is aimed at people that are just starting out. So I thought I'd show you how I put this together. So what I've done is I've taken my primary note here. Now these are all in 64th notes. So if we look at this here, you can see that what I've done is I've drawn in the first four notes. Like so. I'll zoom in a little bit more so it shows that it is in 64th. So you can see that it fits nicely in here. Then what I wanted to do is cascade down, so I've gone one, two, three, four, and again, now you can't really go much lower than this because the dynamic range of the violin would, would pretty much fail a few, a few notes down. Um, but the easy way to put this together is if you do your first note, then two notes, then three notes, then four notes, then three notes, then two notes, then one. And if you if you basically click through this, you've got one, two, three, four. Now the next one is here. But if you play it this way as well, so you can tell if your notes line up. Okay, so I'll show you this again. So my first part is the initial the initial start of the run. So it's one, two, three. Four. The second part is I need that to cascade down, so I've picked the second note to drop down with. Uh, 
and as I was showing you before, if you if you basically use the notes on the outside, they mirror what's happening in the cascade. So that way you're pretty much guaranteed to get a decent cascade, or to get this to run properly. There's no maths involved in this, it's literally a case of when you've done the first, you drop down and take the second note, drop down, take the third note, four down, take the fourth note, four down. Okay? Now these are on 64s, so, um, and at w the, the trick here is with, when you do a run, you want really the, the first note not to end and then the second note carry on. What you really want is the first note to end as the second note starts. And what this does is when you've got a run note, you'll find that it's, a, it's almost like a sustained note, um, but you want the two to blend. So it doesn't, you're not, it's not like a staccato run when it goes dun 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 dun. It, it smooths out a little bit. So obviously you'll need samples that can do this, or you can use, you can cheat and use um, tremolo, which is, uh, I'll show you this in a minute, um, with normal strings, okay? But that's how you create that part. And then, of course, all you really do is, is put your scale in, and the scale can be anything, really. That's You move that up and down based on what you want to do, um, whereas mine obviously goes across here. Um, goes down and then back up again. The other side of this, if you notice, so we've got this like a cascading run here, but at the very end, we've got a very quick amount of notes that goes up to create another type of run. So let's just have a quick look here. So what I've done with this one is I've just done the same thing as here, but I've moved them, they're, they're much quicker. And the idea behind this one is I don't want to cascade it, I want it to end pretty quickly. So if we listen to this, Now you'll, you'll hear, when, when you play it back like that, it doesn't sound right. It, it sounds a little bit odd. Let's play it back again. Well, and that's really because this is meant to be played fast. Sorry, I was just moving the chair. Uh, or it doesn't work. And that's the whole thing about a run. If you watch a, an orchestral run, you'll notice that the violinists, the cellos, or, or even the flutes are playing very, very quickly. So there's a couple of pointers here. First one, make sure your notes overlap. Actually, that one doesn't. And that one does a little bit too much. So we'll ignore them two for now. That's, I've shaped them because I wanted a specific sound. But the rest of them, you've got one, two, three, four, four lengths of 64. And this one cuts in just before that one ends, OK? I'll probably end up changing them, actually, at some point. And with these ones, it's the same. One, two, three, four. Each note starts before the other one runs out. Now, don't worry too much about this here. I'm, because I'm using the cinematic strings, um, they have a section on that says run mode, and it just uses different samples, uh, which makes this wonderful run sound. So I'll show you this anyway. It's not a, really a plug for cinematic strings. It just shows you how straightforward they are. And, of course, my expression map use, just clicks on these articulations for me. It makes things nice and easy. Uh, you can just play and then press the key corresponding to the articulation. You could actually draw it in here, and it would then put all these into run mode. Now, that's for using something like cinematic strings, which are pretty much designed to do this, which is why I bought them in the first place. But what about another library? What about if you're... So you're just starting out, and your um, budget doesn't extend to to these. They're not majorly expensive, but you know when you're first starting out, everything's expensive. So what I've done here is I've changed tactics slightly. So this is actually using the Play Symphonic Orchestra um, strings. Now the reason I use these is because these are the gold editions and these are far cheaper. So if we just open these up here. And what I've done is I've loaded a channel with the 11 violins, short, Marcato, uh, well, Mark strings, Marcato strings, which are not quite staccato. So if you think about it, staccato is like a dumb, Marcato would be like a dumb, if you see what I mean? So it's a little bit longer. But it's still a short note. So I've added them, and I've also done this. I've added a tremolo as well. Uh, a tremolo legato. So what these are is, let's just have a look here. So a tremolo, if I just press a key, you see how that's already trembling like this? Now the reason why I'm doing that is because I want to cheat it a little bit, because these aren't, these aren't designed to run. 
I've also got loading in the run simulator, which is this channel here. And let's just name that run simulator so we don't get confused. Run sim, okay. And watch this. This is channel two, so that's our tremolo. And this one here is our Mark strings, Mark Auto strings. Okay, so what we're doing is we're saying, right, I'm not loaded with money here. I'll just get something like um, East West, the East West, sorry, not West um, strings, um, gold. All right, so they're not very expensive, and because they're fairly old now, they'll come down in price. But you, these could be, you could use anything like this. It doesn't necessarily have to be the East West ones. It's just they're the only, they're the oldest ones I've got, I'm afraid. So we'll just minimize that. So, well, how do we make this into a run? Well, I've drawn a little. Uh, I've drawn a little run here with the mark art, the mark strings, shall we say? So we'll just play this back, and I'll just load in. So you can see I've done the same thing, three notes, and they're connected by the last note. So let's listen to that. You know what? That's not too bad. But how can we breathe a little more life into that? Well, we can cheat. We can use the tremolo strings. Uh, we'll play these back all by themselves as well. This will sound odd. Ooh, especially when they don't play. Now, so what are we doing here? If we put these strings together, as in both MIDI channels at once, just to make sure they line up a little bit. So let's see, we got that one. A bad crime, th a crime thriller, isn't it? So all you're trying to do is use the tremolo to create a little bit of a, um, a shape in there, if you see what I mean, just to make it a little bit more lifelike. Ooh. Right, so let's just play that back, see what that sounds like. So what's happened is it's basically taken the marcato strings and it's added the tremolo strings, and when you mix them together, the tremolo kind of adds this nice little kind of flow to the to the marcato strings. So you don't need a string run to do this. You you can actually just do it with like I say tremolo strings and marcato strings. And I encourage you to play around with these kind of ideas because it's by doing this that you'll you'll come up with all kinds of crazy ways of doing it. And this also works for um, other instruments. The tremolos and the marcato you could use staccato if you wanted to. It might be a little bit too sharp for what you want. But there's nothing stopping you from doing string run. So what we're going to do, let's just have a look at this. So I'm going to grab that last component that we had, if you remember, this one here. I'm just going to nick this. It's very naughty of me. So I'll just copy that, and we'll dump this into here, over here somewhere, under 13. There we go. So we'll play that back. I do apologize that that's a little loud. Okay. So then what we'll do is we'll then also we'll drop it into here. But we'll drop it into here just because um it, it's not going to follow particularly. We're not we don't really want every note in there. There we go, I'll just well, that was interesting. And that's with see how these tremolo strings fit together? Again, it doesn't look like they're in the right place, but if you zoom in, then you can see them. So I'll just minimize that, and then we'll play that together. So both of them. Well, then you have a run. And you're not using any special run simulators or anything. All you're doing is two, using two sets of strings. Okay, so again, this is um, literally when you've got no samples, or you, you've got very low-key samples. Um, you can play around with the tremolo, uh, the tremolos anyway. Uh, you can EQ them a little bit. When I say EQ, um, you can shape the sound a little bit. You can take away some of the bass. You can add a little bit to the top. You can basically shape this. And I'll go through an EQ uh, tutorial at some point, depending on if people want that kind of thing. So um, what I'm trying to do here is, as I said before, I'm trying to get people that um, that do music to show people that don't kind of tips and, and skills to try and help people, get more people into writing music. Um, there's no secrets to it, it's, there's no real craziness to it, I'm sure people can do this far better than I can, but this is kind of me doing my bit every so often. So, I hope this has helped, 
uh, if there's any questions then please leave comments and I'll try to get back to you as soon as I can.